he he has set traps. I think for contracting um, that you have to be careful of. Most of the ways contractors are working, they're falling into these traps. If the homeowner had actually called in and said, my roof was damaged and here's what my bid is, I think you have a different reaction. You have negotiated 20% over the line items. Show me that your line items are what you said they were going to be. When that claim reserves get set up, I mean, obviously, the more money that's in that claim reserve, the more money potentially for you. Good morning, guys. Um, comment below if you cannot hear me for any reasons. Today I have very short live. Hopefully we'll get it done within 20 minutes or less. Shooting for 10, but if you guys have questions, I'm here for you. I want to share with you top five lessons I learned from John Howe telling one of the most impressive people I've ever met in my life. Probably the richest man uh, who lives in the most expensive house I've been and overall just super, super impressive. So if you've missed, we have a couple interviews on our channel with a John Howe telling two interviews. They're pretty big, two hour plus, but they're worth every minute to tune in and listen to. Who is John Howe telling? Well, he's a lawyer, he's an entrepreneur, uh, American Ethane is his company. I mean, you're talking about $70, $80 billion range. Uh, I mean, huge company. He does business with the Russian oligarchs. He does business with a lot of politicians. Uh, he's involved in the political world, hosts a lot of parties for politicians. And oops, hold on, my bad. Click something here. So overall, very impressive uh, person. I have a privilege not only to know him, but spend a couple of days with him. And I want to share a couple of lessons that every contractor, every entrepreneur can learn from. Number one is always dress well. Uh, something that contractors are not known for. Uh, every time I meet John Howe telling, he's always impressive. I remember one of the first events in a career that I attended was, I believe, 2014, 2015. I believe it was Chicago. It was about 200 contractors in the room, and I always try to dress nice. I come in and sit with my sales guys, and I look around, and I'm sorry, guys, but I would say 70% of contractors in that room looks like bombs. You know, they did not take themselves seriously, short sleeves, you know, um, just overall, like you're looking at some of the guys, I mean, who are you? Why would anyone give you a trust you big amounts of uh, money for the projects? I mean, contractors manage big checks, 20, 30 grand. Uh, but often we wear $50 um, cloth on us. Uh, there's something about clothing. I remember um, Rodney Webb conference and one time, one time, I'm actually proud of it. Uh, Rodney Webb complimented me. It was uh, it was a very special moment for me because if you know Rodney Webb, he's always roasting contractors. He's always on top of you. He wants to do you be the best you can possibly be. You you will rarely rarely hear a compliment from Rodney Webb. But I remember one of his classes. I chased him for a couple of years all over the United States. Um, I believe it was Colorado, and he singled me out in the room. And he was trying to make a point at that time. He said, guys, look at Dimitri, look how he dressed and look, look how you dress. And he was calling out people. I'm like, what? You're going to come to my house, dress up like that. And um, if one thing you have to like pay attention to, not only, I mean, I don't want you to be stylish. I don't like John Howe telling he has bow tie, he has suits. But even if he, if he is casual, he's still very stylish. And there's just something to it. Every time I was in the presence of John Howe telling or very, very uh, impressive people, very successful people in my life, there's just something to it. Like when you dress up nice, people want to do business with you. You're just that impressive individual. And it's like, who is this guy? I'm telling you right now, how you walk matters, how you talk matters, how you dress matters. And sometimes the difference in sales will be your dress. Like, you know, when you're going to come in, if I come in and dress nicely and you dress like a bum, maybe we have the same price. Maybe we have the same product. But at the end of the day, people are going to remember me as maybe a little bit more professional, not because what I told them, 
but because how I dressed. Uh, in Russia, we have a famous Russian proverb. We meet people by the outside, but uh, we say bye to them by what's inside. So we, we greet by exterior and we say goodbye by interior. So when you say bye, it's not what you've been wearing. It's what you've been saying. But when you meet the person for the first time, the first impression is something you cannot and you cannot enter that pool twice. You only have one shot for impression. And John Howtelling is one of the most impressive people here. Definitely learn from him. Number two is have a true passion in life. Recently, I did a poll in a Roofing Insights private group and I asked contractors, if I hire you, what I would remember about you besides that you're a roofer, besides your trade, what is it that I would remember? And I'm going to call you out, guys. There was a lot of bullshit answers. Here's why I ask that question. In my career, I've met many, many homeowners and I ask them this question, who did you roof last time? Like sometimes it's five years ago, six years ago, three years ago, you know, not that far. Like who did you roof? Your roof is fairly new. Who did it? And people could not remember you know, some company. Mike Mikalovich at our conference, I was interviewing him in front of big audience and he told us right away. He's like, yep, I just got my roof done eight years ago. And I'm like, who did your roof? He's like, some roofer. Listen, if I did your roof, you're going to remember me. Now, the people people were giving me some generic answers. Well, they're going to remember me by my communication, by my customer service. Nobody going to give you uh, remember you by your communication or your customer service. It's a bullshit answers from bullshit contractors. Freaking grow a character. I want to remember you for your passion in life. What is it that you do? What is it so special about you? Learn from John Howe telling. Go and rewatch his interviews. I mean, yes, he is a famous lawyer, $5 billion settlement. Yes, he is a really good entrepreneur. But you're probably going to remember him by his fancy cars. And I'm not talking about fancy, interesting cars, racing cars. The guy has a passion. He has a hobby. You know, people will remember me as maybe a Russian immigrant who was sleeping in the car because I'm going to tell you right away my story. I want you to remember me as a guy who was sleeping in a car and today live an American dream. That's my story, not because of customer service. That's all going to take a place, not because of my communication, not because of my work ethic, not because I go extra mile for my clients, but you're going to remember me because I am special, because I am different. Are you different or are you like everyone else? I'm telling you, John Howell Telling is different. I know many lawyers. Most of them, I don't know what their hobbies is, but I know John Howell Telling. I know all about his house is like a museum. His uh, garage is like a museum as well. So very interesting person. And if you can learn from him, learn this. Become a character, man of character. Develop a hobby that people will remember. Listen, when, when we do business with people, it's not always about profession. It's not about what they do. It's how they do it. Something unique about that person. You know, recently I visited Monarch Roofing and uh, Martin, the owner, he's a golfer. Like in my mind, when I think about that guy, I always imagine him as, as a golfer. A lot of people imagine me as a crossfitter. Like, as a matter of fact, even when we travel, people recognize me. Like, if you follow Roofing Insights, people waiting for Roofing Insights to come in and they're starting exercises, doing crunches and doing squats and mocking me what exercise I'm going to do with them. Because I have a personality of the guy who's really fitness fanatic. That's who I am. I'm a challenger. I'm going to challenge you physically. I'm going to challenge you in arm wrestling. Develop a character that people will remember. It's very, very important, guys. Number three, this is one of the most important thing. By the way, if you like this topic and if you want me to bring you more successful people and lessons from it, from them, give it a like. It really helps. More people will see those lessons and I want to definitely more, do more case studies uh, from uh, for you. Number three, present yourself well. Recently, someone asked me. So for those of you who don't know, John Howe telling we've done two big interviews for us for 
uh, Roofing Insights channel, but he also did a couple lessons, uh, like about two hour lessons for our school. And in the school, in lessons, he was teaching about how to work with insurance companies. And it's very, very controversial. Not many people understand it. Not many contractors are willing to do it because they want to play a game with insurance companies. Now, I don't know more successful people than John Howell Telling. I know successful people, but John Howell Telling in numbers don't lie. He is the most successful. He really understands the insurance games. He, uh, game. He really knows how to pound insurance, how to get from insurance the most. So when the guy like that is teaching, you better ask yourself why you're not listening. You better ask yourself why you're arguing and why you're pushing it back. So here's what's happening. Usually, contractors, they meet insurance adjuster and they uh, they start that claim process. They take a claim and they want to supplement on the back end. What John Howe Telling is teaching is present the estimate before. Yes, it might scare insurance provider in a sense and many contractors who are not willing to do it. Why? Well, it's very simple because they, they want insurance to agree to small scope of work and they want to supplement later, 30, 40% up, right? So recently someone asked me, Dmitry, what do you think about it? Do you think we really can do what John Howell Telling uh, teaches? And here's my honest answer. I think we can. I think everybody can do what John Howell Telling does. I mean, think about it. Think what's happening when you present yourself when. When when you're becoming John Howell Telling in your space, you meet adjuster, you dress nice, you act professional, you're not a bullshitter, you tell telling that home, homeowner and that adjuster and that insurance company, whoever you deal with, hey, I'm a professional contractor. Here's what it takes to restore this job. I'm not your typical Josh Moore. I'm going to do it right. Here's my professional 30 page estimate. You're knowledgeable. You support every claim. This is what John Howell telling us. He doesn't just give you one page estimate and say, well, here's my original estimate, $45,000. And insurance is like, no, it's $20,000 claim. Well, you can only pull it off if you do everything else that John Howell telling is teaching you. Guys, I've been in his trailer. I've been. I've seen how he does it. It makes perfect sense. When you come in and you prepared, you cannot ignore a prepared person. I mean, if I'm a adjuster and you're the contractor and you're just so impressive, you come to me, it's like, Dimitri, here's what needs to be done. Boom, boom, boom. Here's the three pages for this. Here's the local code. Here's the community. Here's the pictures before. Here, If you've done your work and you spent two days on the file, now it's that much harder to fight you, to, you know, I see like, hey, this guy is freaking serious. He's not going to go away. He already spent two days on this. So this is the most important lesson that John Howe Telling is teaching. I mean, do the work, do the homework. Contractors are lazy. We want to fight. We, we want to um, prove ourselves later on how tough we are, how good we are. Or insurance companies are evil. We're going to fight them. They deny, deny. Yeah. What did you do, though? So John Howard telling he's going to come in prepared. He's going to. And listen, you don't have to do it. You can do it your way. You don't have to do it John Howard telling way. But I'm telling you, don't question it because it makes perfect sense. There's a lot of lawyers and they do things probably different. Too. I've seen it at work and it makes sense to me. When you prepare, the, I know one thing for me personally. When I, I can, like, for example, I'm a media company now. If someone calls me and says, Dimitri, um, we want to work with you. I'm like, sure. Here's, you know, text to the price. Like, I'll no. You know, I have a media kit that it took us a week to put together. Everything that Roofing Insights offers to, you know, bigger brands. We just landed a pretty good uh, uh, deal with a pretty big brand. Um sign up very big speaker for our conference very excited about it but i want you to know i've been working for two years on that deal and last week i finally sent you know nice proposal i'm talking about nice presentation john howe telling way explaining to potential vendor of our sponsor partner whatever you call it hey here's what you get it's not just like how big dimitri or roofing insights is yes we're number one in our space yes quality of the 
videos are high yes we get the views but you're never too big to fail you always have to do the homework and you have to present well so this is the lesson from john how telling present yourself well present yourself really good um and i promise you if more contractors are doing it the more conscious that adjuster they're going to respect you way more now we have this hate even before we go into the deal oh they're just bad guys no it's sometimes and i like push yourself in the shoes of the adjuster when you come in with one page estimate and you're asking for ten thousand dollar overhead and profit they're not idiots you know you have to earn your living you have to earn you you can't just be a paper contractor and say well you owe this to me why do i owe you to you sometimes you know if you if people can trust and see that hey this guy put two days worth of work even before he started the claim you know he's worth it he's worth it overhead and profit he's worth you know a little bit more than the other guy your homeowner will see it your contract your adjuster insurance company will see it will they fight you probably they will but your chance of getting it is actually much higher um number four it's my favorite john how telling does not advertise i don't advertise um i want you to understand why i actually talked to him about it he doesn't run ads he runs amazing brand personal brand business brand when you have when you have good brand and quality product the information about you will spread faster than any advertising can when you have excellent product and product is actually much better the information will spread um if you follow even roofing insights in our conference my competition is cold calling i mean, our school is growing our conference is growing everything we do is growing we don't advertise we we do content but your product is your best business card. Chan Hao Telling does not advertise. He's very successful in every rare area of his life, and he does it on purpose. Like he advertises his brand in different ways. I mean, he'll go raise, he'll go, uh, you know, for fancy interviews with the CN and you know, like big, big channels, frontline, what's not. So you have to be public about your business. You have to get out, and trust me. John Howell does get out. He's on the stage. He's in interviews. He's in, in newsrooms, right? But he does not advertise. Content marketing always beats paid marketing. John Howell understands it. You will not see him call calling you. Hire me. His reputation goes in front of me. Him. Learn that because so many contractors, they only rely on marketing dollars. They never build solid brand. I never relied on that. And I never have a problem with leads. So don't advertise. And number five, the last lesson for today from John Howe telling, be a good storytelling. I've spent a few days with John Howe telling, met him probably five, six times in the last couple of years. Every time I meet, every time we have a Zoom call, he's always, always have a good story to tell. Not always um, business story, but just good entertaining story. He's always like, hey, you know, Nancy Pelosi was in my house. Like there's just always story in, he will make you laugh. He will make you feel emotional and he will want you to make, to, to do business with him. When you're a good storyteller, people remember you. When you're a good storyteller, people want to do business with you. You just, more memorable guy over in business overall you're not gonna have the problem who did our roof five years ago promise you if i do your roof if you hire me you're gonna remember me you're gonna remember my stories it's human behavior uh one-on-one this is what we love from the times we were little kids uh actually i have five kids for those of you who didn't know every night now um i tell them stories so my five-year-old request spe specific stories. Hey, give us a story when you were six-year-old, when you were nutty, when you were, and they love hearing it. They love hearing me grown poor. They love hearing me getting in fights in school. They love hearing me getting in trouble with my parents. 
they remember that and it's the best time of the day for us ever since we were little kids we love stories we like gossip we like behind the scenes share something with your audience share something with your homeowners secret information something sacred share something that's important to you i remember when i started being a contractor people often ask me how is it growing up in russia what do you think about putin is it that bad as do we see it on the news people want to know if you have a story about that they want to see the news through your eyes so john how telling is amazing storytelling and this what you can learn from him i'm going to go really quick to uh comments here just recognize a few people in the audience say hi and we're going to be wrapping it up so danny egan says good morning good morning danny antonio hearing uh Herrera says good morning um eric richardson good morning stud good morning stud back to you uh was that denver i was there yes sir um i remember that too uh, I don't remember you seeing it, but uh, they remember us from $50 in and out gift cards in the hand reading letter. Yes. Jerry Dabry. Hello, Dmitry Dabry here, flooring professional, 20 years. I pray all is well with you and your family. I would love to join your directory. Please email me your number and I will call you. Jerry Dabry. Okay. I will do that today. Huge update about directory. Um, Everybody got their login information so you guys can go log in, change your password, change your information. We have about 20 contractors who've done so. People are changing their pictures, uh, uploading their um, team members to the directory. So he, um, it's actually happening right now for the last three days. We might have some uh, bugs, but we're working it out. I want to say a huge thank you for those who are helping us to build a directory. We're getting tons of leads uh, every month, almost every day we're connecting homeowners with the contractors. Right now it doesn't cost you anything. In the future, it'll cost you 3%. We have uh, on transaction, we have a lot of contractors who got five, six jobs now. And funny thing is a lot of contractors who got jobs, we don't even have them registered because we were not able to track it. It's about to change, but Thank you guys for trying it early on. Thank you for your feedback to help us understand what you want, what homeowners want, and help us build better product. Um, Rick says, John Haltelling sets the bar. Being high performance and focus is the only way to be on his level. Absolutely agree with you, Rick. Uh, love that. Invest in your brand, not others. Great content as always. All right, guys, I promise you it's not going to be one of those super long ones. Uh, thank you so much for coming today. Looks like we're about 25 minutes. Comment below if you ever met John Howe telling uh, what other lessons uh, you learned from him or what did you like about my lessons in this one. If you agree, disagree, always um, love reading your comments. I'll see you guys next video and thank you for coming. Clock, uh, I I sold a Lamborghini Murcielago. <laughs> that was traded for the clock. So really, yeah, this was done um, in the studio, uh, Michelangelo's old studio in Florence. Uh, I can tell you that most businesses are going to shut people down and not keep people on payroll just for the just for the heck of it. You and I have an alignment of interest when it comes to insurance company. We both want it fixed quality, and we want it fixed well. It's not so much uh bailing out these big corporations or the rest of it as it is as i see it as a bailout of the insurance companies he's he has set traps i think for contractors um, that you have to be careful of most of the ways contractors are working they're falling into these traps if the homeowner had actually called in and said, my roof was damaged and here's what my bid is, I think you have a different reaction. You have negotiated 20% over the line items. Show me that your line items are what you said they were going to be. When that claim reserves get set up, I mean, obviously, the more money that's in that claim reserve, the more money potentially for you.